Hey, this is Flo, and in this video I'm showing you a couple of ways to write cleaner Swift UI views with examples. Let's get right into it, but before we start, please consider subscribing and comment down below if you have any other tips and tricks or any ideas for a future video. Okay, so we will cover five topics in this video. First one is computed variables, then extracting views to their own structs, toolbars and how to make those reusable, extracting logic outside of the view and then also giving the view capabilities. Okay, so let's start with computed variables. You all know computed variables from, for example, the body variable. That one is computed and we can extract parts of the body outside of it into their own computed variables. So it would, for example, be called var my v stack some view and then inside of the curly braces you would put the v stack. Just an example. They're halfway reusable, I would say, because you can use those computed variables a bunch of times inside of that specific view struct, but you cannot use it outside of that view struct. They do increase readability of the body and maintainability because it's very easy to find what you're looking for inside of that view struct. For example, you can use them inside of control statements. Let's look at an example here. So before, we have this computed views view with a navigation view and a vstack inside and then we have that if statement. If show results and we have a vstack with the text results and then an image of the results. And if we don't want to show the results then we just have a vstack, there is no data yet, go out and collect some data and then a button to start some data collection. Okay, so we want to extract all that's inside of this logic of the if statement here. So how do we do that? On the right hand side you can see the after picture. There is still our body at the top but you can notice there is two new computed variables below it. The results variable and the no data variable. And inside of our if statement, if show results, we just have our results variable and else we just have the no data variable. And inside those two new computed variables we have extracted our two vstacks. This makes the body look a lot cleaner and you will instantly know what is actually shown there. Beforehand you had to actually look at the code, okay that's a vstack with a text of results and then an image, okay, but on the right hand side you can just see if show results, results. Okay, so it's a lot easier to understand what is actually shown there. Next up is extracting views. So you can extract a part of one view to another view struct, you've probably done this already but I just want to give you an example here on the right hand side I rebuilt the Netflix app a video on that is actually coming soon as well but you can see these these rows of movie posters the previews trending now and watch again and all of those are actually basically the same code so let's look at how that is resembled inside of code but first when you're extracting views you need to pay attention to carry over dependencies so view models or configurations or whatever. You can do that by passing them down through the environment or through bindings. That's not really the topic of this video. I just want to you know, let you know that that's important. And now that view is completely reusable. So let's look at the code. Before, there is just a lot of code. I have already extracted the header view and the previous view. If I go back, so the, the first row basically with the Netflix logo, TV shows, movies, my list, that's the header view, it's just a computed variable. And then the preview row with those circly images, that is just the previews view. Those are two computed variables that I already extracted out of the body. But as you can see, there's three vstacks here, which are basically exactly the same. So you should extract them outside of the body into a content row view then you can just use the content row three times here instead of all these vstacks and you can already see how crazy little code you need now compared to before. Okay, so we took this one vstack which we had three times basically the same, we just had to change the title and then we put it into a content row view. Next up is toolbars. There is a handy protocol here that's called toolbar content which we can use similar to the view protocol and this allows us to make reusable toolbars for example if we want to have the same buttons in the navigation bar in every single view 
we can just reuse the same toolbar. It's very similar to extracting a view. Let's just have a look at an example here. So on the right hand side you can see we have a leading and a trailing button in the navigation bar at the top and then also a bottom button in the bottom bar. And now what we can do on the left hand side here, on the top you can see we have a struct my toolbar which conforms to the toolbar content protocol. And then inside of the body we just have some toolbar content, so very similar to some view. And in there we just put all of our toolbar items. You could also put toolbar groups there, or toolbar item groups there, of course, if you want to have multiple items with the same placement. And now in our view struct at the bottom, the my view struct, we can just say dot toolbar my toolbar. Okay, so very easy to use and to reuse this toolbar now. Okay, next up is extracting logic. This is a bit different to the previous examples because we always extracted UI there, but now the core idea is to move computations or business logic, as it's often called, outside of the view body. So if you only need to compute the stuff once at the beginning, you can use a member variable or a constant inside of the view, or you can create a private function if it, for example, needs to be calculated when a button is pressed or whatever, or even better, you move it completely outside of the view struct, for example, using an architectural pattern like model view view model, so MVVM. I also have a video on that if you want to check it out. And then you can just move all of that logic inside of the view model. For our example, we will look at this code here beforehand. If we looked at the for each, we actually created two constants inside of the for each every single time. The with constant and the height constant and then we used it down in the rounded rectangle frame. Afterwards I extracted that logic into a private function inside of the view so only this view can call the function, hence private, and just created two functions, one to get the width and one to get the height. Of course this is a very simple example but I think you get the point. So here you can see we just created those two functions and then just call them inside of the frame modifier for all rounded rectangle. So this just as a reminder, removes all of the logic outside of the view body into a private function or even better into a view model or something similar. Okay, next is view capabilities. And this is a fairly new concept, at least to me, I never thought about views like this. But when looking into SwiftUI 3, there is a bunch of new modifiers that actually yeah, could be described by giving the view a new capability. So there's the refreshable modifier where you can pull to refresh on a list, for example. There's the searchable modifier where there is an automatic search bar added to the list and the list is now searchable so it has the capability of searching. There is also the resizable modifier for images that was already in SwiftUI before but yeah, refreshable and searchable are really what sparked the idea for me to perhaps try this concept out myself. And the idea is to give views capabilities through view modifiers and they can be reused easily of course. That's the whole idea of view modifiers. Now, as an example, I'm actually showing you code from one of my apps where I have created a shoppable modifier. The shoppable modifier adds a toolbar to the top of the navigation bar where all of the user's current coins are displayed and then when they tap on it, a sheet is opened to buy more coins. So you can see here the shoppable modifier which takes in a binding to the user data so we can update the amount of coins and then also a binding to a state property whether to show the sheet or not to show the sheet. Okay, so this shoppable modifier can then be reused in pretty much every single view. And this is just a quick example here of the shoppable modifier. In my case, I just created a function on view, but usually what you do is you create a view modifier and then just call that inside of a function. For simplicity here, I just put everything inside of the function. So you can see the signature here is pretty long. First of all, we of course extend the view protocol and we create a function called shoppable, which takes in a binding to some user data, a binding to a boolean to display the sheet or not display it, and then also an optional refresh closure that could be called in the end, uh, not really important right now. But what is important is that this function also returns some view in the end, so you can chain more modifiers to it. Okay, and then the the actual content of the function here is not that important. So as I already mentioned, return self, so the current view, 
and then just add a toolbar there and also add a sheet there and that's already it. All right, that's it with my five quick ways to make your views look a lot cleaner, to extract some logic, some functionality and some UI for reusability basically. All right, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below if you have more ideas for future videos or for tips to make your SwiftUI views cleaner. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.